My parents are used to be at war with each other's families. They divorced when I was really young. But my father used to tell me, don't, don't eat food that your mother's family set out for you if you didn't see how it's prepared, if it didn't come out of the community. You're gonna be poisoned. Don't drink drinks on the bottom because that's where the medicine sinks. like a potato. No, they thought he was the tattoo artist, which I thought that was hilarious. I was like, mm, I feel I insulted. So. No, because they were thinking like, oh my God, she's so young. Like she looks so young. Or you seem so um, like. So I seem like a good Asian. Yeah, like <laughs> my mom was like, oh, she looks, she's very sweet. She's very nice. And I was just like, oh, well that's the tattoo artist. And she's like, huh? <laughs> And, I, and then here comes Melanie, was like, oh yeah, she did all my tattoos. And oh, no. not my mom being like, wait a second, the dots are connecting. <laughs> like she's like, mm, you're the Hey, cause. when I'm presenting and when I order Asian people, I can be like mad polite. Like, and, no, and you nice. were, you were 100%. No, that's the same thing with Amy. Like, uh, I don't know if she ever talked to you about it, but do you, so I brought Ian there, right? And then uh, I remember like introducing them and then she was just like, yeah, like five years ago when we met, like uh, I didn't like really pay much attention to her because I thought she was a delinquent. <laughs> <laughs> like with the tattoos, with the red hair and like how I dress. That's so funny. And then she's like, but I actually realized every time she always says hi and bye, she's very polite and she's so <laughs> nice and she tips a lot. Ooh. And then so she was like, I realized she was actually a nice person and now she is my daughter. I was like... That is so funny. I was like, you don't just tell people you thought I was a delinquent. Listen, I, I get that all the friggin' time. Like, that's my life. Oh, yeah, I don't want that nurse because of the tattoos. That's happened to me so much. Like, where... People said that? Oh my God. Like assholes. All the time. Like, I would walk into the room, you know, introduce myself, like, hey, I'm gonna be your nurse tonight. And I would, this lady's just like, no. <laughs> no, I've had that. She was straight up. She saw me. Maybe it's like I, maybe I scared her. I mean, I did have. Do you like, have like short hair, sleeves so. when you work or not? Yeah. I can give a oh, because the blue scrubs are like. Yeah, it's here, like a right? short sleeve. But I didn't yeah. really care because I'm like, what are my tattoos gonna do? Like, compromise your health? Like, I don't know how that makes compromise sense. Compromise your religion? Uh, apparently, no. But she straight up looked at me. She looked at me up and down. She was like, no. And I said, I'm sorry. She goes, I need another one. Yes. Thank you so Thank much. You. Oh, cool. Ooh, yo, do you smell that? One second. I just said, I gotta tie my up for this one. Or I don't wanna be eating and my hair's falling into food. <laughs> but yeah, no, that lady was like, no, I need another one, another nurse. And they got another nurse. But joke's on her, because the nurse that she had was new, was terrible. <laughs> so, whose loss is it really? No, I feel like, I mean, older people, you know. Yeah. But I think nowadays it's not as bad. Like, I have a question. What? Why did they give you two straws? Like I've seen it in, in movies a bunch. I don't. But know. like, why do cocktails always come with like two little straws? Honest to God, I don't know. I like, can't tell you. Like, give me a give me a cocktail and give me like a boba straw. A boba straw? <laughs> That's just gonna be gone in like one slurp. But I remember like when you first you did my first tattoo. I think we didn't talk that much. But because I had my friend your friend was there. April was there. Yeah. Yeah, April was there. Because it's really hard for me to like talk a lot with you if your friends are already there because you guys have your own conversation going that on. And, like my back was to you. You were on my back. Yeah. <laughs> Literally and then on my back. I think we really started talking when I did your calcifer tattoo. You yeah. and your sister. I was thinking about this the other day actually, when I was talking to my parents about you. Um, what did you tell them about me? I'm really curious. Well no, I did tell them, okay, you're like one of my main tattoo artists. Um, They're gonna I, hate me. No, but when I told them like how we work together for the shop, mm -hmm. you know, they thought it was cool because they were just like, oh wow, like one they were questioning me. They're like, oh, you're even really good at that. I was like, yo, <laughs> Asian parents, yo, Asian parents. Um, but then also they were like, that's really cool because you know I think they also don't really see many Asian people in creative spaces. Mm -hmm. So to see someone so close, and especially like very close in age, I think it's like really interesting to them. Um, 
so when I told them like yeah we're like gonna be doing the shop together you know um, putting together all the artwork and whatever they were like oh that's really cool um, and then they thought it was so interesting how you got yourself to this point by yourself you know how much did you tell them a lot I, I mean I'm pretty transparent with I feel them. I feel exposed my whole life story <laughs> to these strangers no, but like I'm pretty transparent with them about like people I, I care about mm -hmm. so, I mean, that's the thing it's like you said it's there's not a lot of Asian creators in the game where yeah. it's like it's also not like exclusive because right. there is plenty of Asian artists that are in the states right now yeah 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 but they're so like clicky clicky yeah that's the thing <laughs> and I've even seen some artists who do not tattoo them if you're not Asian. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that was really a thing. I only saw that recently. I feel like there's a lot of controversy. I get that though. Because like, the one, it's like, there is a cultural significance. Yeah. Exactly. Like, see, the thing about East Asia, like specifically, I'm lumping in like all the East Asian countries, is that like, Every single East Asian country is so different right. in how we accept foreign culture. Totally. Like, there are some, even within the same country, that you have regions that are like super accepting of right. foreigners, and they're like, oh my god, yes, wear our traditional clothing, like, appreciate it, learn it. And then there's literally people that are just like, oh, you don't speak my language, I'm gonna ignore you. Right. Like, Japan's a really good example. That's true. Like, the yeah. xenophobia is real. Oh, it's real. crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I think people need to understand that there is a certain integrity to yeah, culture. Yeah, there we go. There yeah, it is. Yeah, and then way you are not entitled to enjoy somebody's culture. Right, like, exactly. Especially they, when it's permanent. Exactly. On your body. They, they can choose to share it with you and you can choose to ignore it. But right. a lot of people fail to understand is that like culture also roots in how you grow up right. and where you're from. Exactly. And it's exactly. not something that you can so simply identify with and in favor yeah and be like oh that's a cute design yeah and you can't like uh, okay let me tell you the story so in when i was at school mm. we had this girl um she was very much an outspoken advocate for the black community uh which like i appreciate her she was a great artist she's you know and then one day she came in with ceremonial chopsticks in her hair and literally, as as she walked in, all of like you know the, the Chinese friends like that I have in the class, we all looked at each other and oh we're like, God. oh, that's not okay. Yikes. And then so one of them actually went up to her and was like, hey, like just so you know, these are used for this. Like, um, could you not do this? Yeah. This girl, like I have never been this mad at a person. She turned around and she was just like, oh, I can do whatever I want. And I was like, you can't be that contradicting. I'm like, you are an outspoken advocate for your culture. How can you disrespect somebody else's culture like that? Oh, God. That's... That's... that's yeah. Things. And that wasn't even like us saying, oh, you can't use it. Yeah, no. It's, it's just, just saying... They try to educate her yeah. on what that is actually for. And I was just like... And also we use that to eat. <laughs> Not for your hair. Because like, there's a thing, like in, I don't know about other cultures, like I was very young when I was in Taiwan, but there's a thing like in Taiwan, you don't stick your chopsticks in Up the rice. straight. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're literally praying to praying your ancestors. To the ancestors. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That is 100%. So like when I see people doing that, I'm just like, oh no. <laughs> I have seen people like straight up just like, I was like, right. please don't do that. Oh my god, that's terrible. No, but when people don't understand, don't I'm know. not like an asshole. I'm like, yo, like, fuck you. Like, <laughs> like hey, who are you praying to? <laughs> is Mima talking back? Yeah, is, yeah, is Mima talking back? Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, but back to the tattoo industry with like the Asian culture, though. I don't know how we got to that point. I don't know how we got there, but we did. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no. Oh, the, my the Korean with artists. With the tattoo, yeah. your mm -hmm. my parents. Um, yeah, they were thinking it's just so impressive because I think also they're just not seeing younger Asian people too. You would think also of like Asian tattoo artists, you do think of like older uh, Japanese dudes with the cig in the mouth, uh, you know, going out. The it. dragon in the, the back. In the back. <laughs> um, and meanwhile, here's me with a little calcifer and a little uh, skull on my arm, you know, calling it a day. <laughs> I think that's just like so funny how like that works. Even um, the more notable Korean artists and yeah, the yeah. Chinese artists yeah. are all in like early 30s. Right. They're just getting younger and younger. I got tattooed by some Korean artists like a few years ago. That dude just turned 21. And I was just like, fear. Holy shit. He did that piece on my knee. 
and he was a nervous wreck. But I mean, that kid, he was so good. Like, and he only, he told me he was only tattooing for like maybe two years or something. Wow. So he started young. So, and, and you know that person um, from Blackfish, uh, Chris J. Tattoo, something like that. That sounds really familiar, and they I know were on Hot Ones. I've seen. They were on what? Hot Ones, like the show with the chicken wings. Oh shit! Yeah. They were tattooing on that show, and they blew the fuck up. I didn't know that. That person was only. They were like a teenager when they started. Crazy. And then their dad is the owner of Blackfish. I so, didn't know that. Yeah. They. I think uh, Kevin. He like started teaching them like how to tattoo. It's and they so grew up in like, that shop. yeah. Isn't it's so hilarious? it's so like heartwarming to see all the young artists coming in. It's crazy. I know. I, I love talking about it. Like I'm some fucking eighty year old, <laughs> even though like I'm included in that demographic. <laughs> but the only thing I don't like is that, and I was talking about this to somebody, and it might have been you too. Um, it might have been me. The trajectory from like art student to tattooer. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> don't get me fucking started on that. The amount of people that are DMing our shop right now that are art students. Yeah. Okay, so there's a very clear distinction between like, I genuinely want to help people. I genuinely right. want to see them succeed. Mm. However, there is a genuine problem with how some people are seeing it as like this like glamorous, like rock star tattoo life. And right. then they're like, it's the same, like, almost same alert as like influencers now, if yes. we can equate it to social media. Right, well, and a lot of it is. And some people don't consider the implications of the culture that happened behind it. I'm not saying you gotta come and get haze and like do all that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. should not. Like, yeah, no, that sucks. No. <laughs> but there should still be a certain amount of respect left for the craft that you right. need to understand. Like, totally. At least study it, at least know etiquette. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people to. have never even been in a tattoo shop. Which yeah. Is and it's which, not to say like they're supposed to be scary and intimidating, but they don't understand the, literally what you're saying, the culture. And even if you don't have the funds to get a tattoo, because that's all, I mean, yeah. I was uh, I was young and I didn't have money. No, it you is. go in and you say hi to people. Yeah. You, you talk to them, you socialize, and right. that's just being a genuine human being. Yeah. Because like, I mean, the three inquiries that we got, right, it was very much of like the... I also sent this email to, to 10 like other, five shops. other shops. Yeah. yeah, completely. I was like, you didn't comment anything about how this shop's culture is, yeah. how like we're trying to be, you know, like kind to everybody, how like uh, we're bringing like gaming culture in, how like specific things that we're doing, um, that's different. Right. And I'm just like, you can't just be like, I'm an art student, I want to do this, it's I been a passion. Like, I want to tattoo. Thanks. Here's my portfolio that I did for my final project. I think that's an overused phrase now too. It's like, oh, I've been very passionate about this since I was young. Like, yes, like I'm not dismissing that, but also I don't know you, so you gotta explain to me yeah. how this passion came about. Right. Um, no, but especially if, if you can tell when they're sending that email to like a billion different shops. Yeah. You know. And it's 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 shedding. It's a very fine line that you have to walk between. Again, like with us, like, you know, the cancel culture of like gatekeeping yeah. versus entitlement from the people that are receiving. Because right now, I think the polarity between it is that some people are just like, if I say one thing, you should trust me. You should know what I mean. You should give me what I want. Right. Versus the older generation who yeah. is just like, this is how it is. Right. I feel yeah. like that makes sense. people around our age, like the early mid 20s yeah. are trying to walk the line of like understanding both sides and mitigating it so we can learn from both sides and right. not repeat that right exactly because i think i mean it's funny because like i'm technically a zoomer <laughs> Zoomer! oh my god not me the millennial oh god but like i don't so feel very zoomerish <laughs> It's also the pandemic has really shaped everything. Yeah, no, I get that yeah. too. Like, that's what, but that's what I'm trying to do with my shop right now. Like, I'm not trying to, like, I'm not gonna be one of those like disgruntled old people that's like, <laughs> if I don't see your intention, like, fuck off. Yeah. You know? What I'm trying to do is provide that resources. That's why I want to start, you know, the social media with like educational videos and be like, you know, this is why. Like, I think. There's a lot of informational videos out there that tells you what you should and shouldn't do. Yeah. But nobody ever explains why. That's true. Nobody ever tells you what the, the other person's perspective is. Yeah. And I think that's the problem with a lot of social media is that you tell people what to do and what not to do. 
but no. people forget that you can still disagree. Yeah. But understand the other person's perspective. Like the rationale behind. All yeah. That. Yeah. Exactly. And maybe, maybe you can just meet halfway. But then, then it will make sense behind that. You know, I used to get yelled at for asking why. Why? <laughs> <laughs> No, so I was a kid, right? I was living with my uncle, and like, but the thing is, I would, I know, I get it, because I would ask why to the stupidest shit. Well, I guess to the adults. So I, he would be like, this is how something works, right? Or this is how like um, a specific policy is, or how you're supposed to cook something. Like, so let's say cook something, right? And I'd be like, oh, why do you do that? And he's like, it's just how it is. Like, don't ask stupid questions. <laughs> And as a kid, I was really traumatized by that because it, <laughs> it kept happening. Because oh, he was like, stop asking why. And then they call me lazy because I asked why. What? Because they're like, you don't want to think about it, so you're just asking for answers. That's I was such like, a I was like, mm, you're gaslighting me. <laughs> Literally, you're gaslighting me. What a backwards ass way of like thinking that. Like, I guess their logic was like, oh, you couldn't figure out on your own, oh, so you're okay. asking why. That's so Asian. But for me, it's like, <laughs> I understand my perspective, but what's your perspective? Yeah. I was a kid asking that, and they're just and like, stop just like, asking stupid yeah, questions. And you're just a kid. Like, damn, I thought we were supposed to be teaching the youth or whatever. Fuck. That's crazy. Wait, so do you work in a public hospital right now? Or we're a private? private hospital. So does a private hospital provide you with, like, resources for mental health? <laughs> they're supposed to. I mean, we have a psychiatrist on call. But this is also a big stigma in healthcare where it's not even only patients, but even even the employees. Bro, therapists have their ther own therapists. Right. Yeah. My sister. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Like. Yeah. No, but, it, it, and it's true though. It was even this whole thing about healthcare kind of like rushing over mental health really, really kind of showed in, during the pandemic. Like, and, and I could see like they were trying in a, in a sense, but you don't know if it's like a publicity stunt or if it's like they actually really care. Um, or if it's like for personal gain because we had a lot of healthcare workers who were so fucking burned out. I literally was sick for a month and my first day back I had a patient who was intubated. I did not know how to take care of this patient. They just told me, do it. Here's a vent, here's a bunch of drips, figure it out. And here's me still barely breathing on my own in this damn bunny suit sweating and told to just figure it out. This is somebody's life. And then they expect me to be mentally okay when that person literally died. How does that work? How does that work? And then there was so many things where they're like, if you're feeling some type of way, or if you're feeling you need help, reach out to us. And then I've had coworkers who would reach out to like a helpline um, from the hospital. And it would be very basic, like three questions. Yeah. Why, okay. why don't we do some yoga? Let's breathe. Don't think about it. But then, and it comes down to maybe resources, let's say, they didn't want to offer any services for us, like here's a delivery service for food or here's some groceries. We even got some like week old groceries. A what? Week old groceries as like a gift, um, which was crazy to me. We didn't have any financial compensation for any of that. Um, our bonus actually got cut in like more than half. It was insane. And only now are they trying to make up for it by having more of like a team culture. We all care about each other. But then when it came down to it, people were literally dying. A lot of employees died. It is so and it was like, whatever. corporate American. It was insane. <laughs> I, I, that's why like, I don't know how many nurses I spoke to that literally jumped ship. They were literally like, I can't do this. <laughs> like I'm out. Yeah, like everybody's doing their own thing. Everybody's doing other gigs like you know, the ear piercing thing, or um, even like TikTok. Like, there's so many nurses on TikTok. No, nope. I'm on Nurse Talk for some reason. <laughs> it's probably me. Um, yeah, Nurse TikTok, and like, even like other things, like they're designing their own brand of scrubs. Like, or me, like I just could not do it. I When I tell you I was desperate, I went every single fucking day to the job posting board for something that was not at the bedside. And then when I finally got the job that was not at the bedside, I was told I had to stay because we had no more staff. Because <laughs> everybody jumped ship. Because everybody jumped ship. But also it was just like, you can't leave. 
How can you leave? It's not as good as you think. You need this. Uh, to which I'm like, yo, screw y'all. I don't see y'all offering any incentive for me to stay. It's one thing from the hospital, but I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I had a lot of patients that were even like berating me when I'm trying to save their life, you know, or be there for them when no one was there. Like it was crazy. I had some guy once who was really crashing, like doing super bad. And his last thing that he said to me before we intubated was, you, just, <laughs> you fucking bitch. Yeah. But Be what though? Because he wanted to get up to pee. And I said, if you walk right now, you were literally gonna lose your breath because he was on oxygen. Uh -huh. You were gonna lose your breath and you can die. And he was like, oh, you fucking bitch. He got up anyway. And what happened? Exactly that, he crashed. And we intubated him and he died. It's really sad. I hope you're okay because your way of coping is literally just like, damn, that's crazy. <laughs> Not me in hospice. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> literally, the, the way it, it is really sad. I mean, literally, again, I have to turn it into a joke or else, you know, know yeah. life will just have me by the neck. Um, but like, yeah, I would literally be wrapping bodies back and forth, back and forth. It, two minutes is my record. And that's the thing. It's like <laughs> part of what everything is happening in America specifically is that this country is so big and so not unified. Makes no sense. That it is very hard to implement any sort of system. Yeah, hmm. I'm trying to think like, I mean, you were, how old were you before you left like Taiwan? 11. 11. Okay. That was a good. Okay. So I, no, I mean, I, I raised myself how... since I was five. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> so like, it doesn't really matter where I was. Yeah, okay. <laughs> See that, but that's so interesting how that comes out. How you like describe that? I think it kind of makes sense. No, it makes sense though. It's like, personal experience because, that. like, I will easily say this like a million times. I could have easily turned out to be a very spiteful and hateful person with everything that happened. Right. But the thing is, I feel like because those things happened to me, it gives me even more of a reason to not do that to other people. Right. Because I know how it feels. Right. I'm like, why the fuck would I want to do that to you? Right. Exactly. So I'm like, why are y'all doing that to other people? That's why I appreciate your shop. Um, or I can see how some people who have that problem mm -hmm. would appreciate the shop. Because like, yeah, we have a lot of cute little artwork and stuff and like decor and stuff, but the vibe in itself is very low key. Like, and I've heard this, I'm sure you have, it's like somebody's living room. So many people say that to me and it's the biggest compliment ever. Because it's like you literally come in, people are on a couch watching something on the TV, or watching Netflix, watching anime on Netflix. Like, I mean, how homey does it freaking get? You know what I mean? And it's just super chill. Like, you don't feel like I'm not allowed to be here. Yeah. You know, or I can get tattooed and I don't feel so self-conscious about the way I dress or mm -hmm. like the way I'm like positioned or, you know, um, you, you could just be there. Yeah. Which I really appreciate because like there's just so many times where that's so such an uncomfortable feeling when you're already vulnerable in itself, like getting tattooed. Oh, you know the gaslighters will come out of the woodworks and be like, um, if you feel that way, that's on you. Okay, well, get over it. Like, come on, bro. This you're like having clients come to you in a state where they're literally offering their body to you. It's vulnerable. I don't think people, like, a lot of people don't understand how vulnerable you are. Completely. When you get a tattoo. One, you're inflicting pain. That's the one big thing. On purpose. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then it's you're your body. half exposed some of the time and you have a billion people in the shop sometimes. And then for you to be so shitty about, like, asking for a client asking for like a request or like you know like an adjustment is so shit you know like sometimes like you know like with the scenario that you're talking about sometimes when I either don't want or don't can't do a placement mm. I'll explain it but it's more out of like the betterment of the client yeah and you'll explain it but some I've I would be like artist, hey I don't want to do it here yeah. because I am not skilled enough to do it here I've had artists that yeah. were just straight up just like I, I no let's not yeah and I'd be like damn okay fuck and then I'll just go somewhere else give me back my deposit yeah because I'm not gonna reject somebody and have them leaving like speculating yeah because they're gonna be like why did I got say no to like, well, and then they'll end up finding a shitty shop that will just do it for the money and then in the end it looks get bad. a bad tattoo yeah like, that's why I explain I spend the extra 10 15 minutes explaining to my clients even sometimes like 
I feel like maybe I over explained, but I would be like, oh, these are also the other things you can consider mm -hmm. because I'm like, in the future, even if you don't get it from me, I want you to know that this is a good thing why? for you. Yeah, there's yeah. a reason why it's a good thing for you. Because sometimes, like, I mean, with, if, in that regards, if I'm doing a flash walk-in, like, for a flash day, right? Yeah. And I really don't want to do it because time restraint or I'm not comfortable with the area, I was just like, hey, I, I just personally don't prefer that area. Like, you know, it would be a longer time. It would be more difficult to do. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't just straight up be like, no. Bro, I'm, I'm excited, though, for, like, us working together at some point and, you know. I think it would be amazing. No, that's going to be fun. Yeah. Like, I, I can already see it, you know, once I get all that shit together, we're gonna have fun. Now you don't have to be like, no, we don't do piercings. Um, well, okay, I've been telling people, I was like, oh no, we're not we're not doing it now, but we're planning on having a piercer. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. It's gonna be so much fun. You know, it's so funny, I was telling people that already, and some people were like offering up their ears to me. <laughs> ears is the easiest place to start though. Exactly. Yeah. No, uh, listen. I'm not gonna start straight to like a nipple or something, like you know what I mean? That shit is so painful. I mean, I don't have any. No, my friends do. But like from everybody <laughs> else that I've heard that got it, and from what I've seen in other shops that I've worked at, I was like, uh-uh. <laughs> also, okay, quick story. But I'm so freaked out by nipple piercings because one time this guy was telling me a story about how like they went to a rave. Um, oh my god, no. This girl had like a nipple piercing. Oh my god. They were all like dancing and stuff. Um, oh no, he had a nipple piercing. Oh, okay. And so she was, he was dancing with a girl. She had curly hair. Uh. <gasps> so she, she like hair whipped. They were drunk as fuck. The next day he woke up, it was, his nipple was missing. And then he found the girl, it was in her hair. And I was like, no. Oh my god, that's terrifying. And then there's a second one, which was this guy who got a nipple piercing. It healed fine, everything was fine. One day he came home, there was this white hair sticking out of his nipple. So he was like, oh, like it was just hair, right? So he pulled it and immediately passed out. Because it turns out that it was a nerve ending. Wait, I've seen that on he TikTok. He just fucking pulled it. I was like, oh, oh no. my god. Yeah, I saw that on TikTok and I was like, that can be fucking hell. I pierced my own lip when I was in high school four times. Oh, four times? I bought a kit off Amazon. I was like, I'm gonna make sure it's sterile. I'm gonna do it the right way. I hope so. Fuck. Um, so I literally just clamped, stuck the needle through. The first two times I did it, um, I was bleeding profusely. I fucking bet. So I had to take it out. Oh um, and I was like, I'm gonna try this again. And I actually did it the second, uh, the second time. It went through. I kept it hidden. My spider bites. Yeah. I kept it hidden from my uncle for two years. Wow, damn, that's a long time. Because I was just pretending I was a little, I was like, I'm gonna be hygienic at home. So I wore a mask the entire time for two years. Yo. <laughs> That's committing to the bit. That's crazy. And then he found out one day when I was eating in a restaurant with him because my mask slid down. And he's out. like, what is that? Oh my god. That's crazy. And he, at that point, he was just like, I don't care. How long did, when did you take that out? A while back? In high, in high school. Mm. Well, in my senior year. Oh. So that was like... <laughs> <laughs> Math. Wait, hang on. It's 2022. Yes, that's correct. So I took it out in 2017. Oh wow. In senior year of high school. Oh. Have you ever, I mean, I know you were saying you would think about the eyebrow. Would you do it? Okay, but like, I hate healing piercings though. Yo, that's it's, what I was telling somebody. I was like, tattoos, like, it's like two weeks, fine. Piercings is like half I a year. I was literally telling that to someone how they were arguing with me as to why piercings are better than tattoos. And I said, okay, listen. It gets dirty. You have to clean it. It's so much Jewelry work. rust. I feel like it hurts more. It hurts more. If you don't have the it right piece of jewelry. It smells like shit if you don't clean yeah, it. Yeah, if you don't have the right piece of jewelry, it's all over the fucking place. At least the tattoos, it's there. You set it, you wash it, put the damn fucking aquaphor in And if it looks like it. shit in the future, get it covered get up. Get it covered up, exactly. I'm glad you ate. Yeah, I know. Oh. But we did have a coconut water. You can't go back once you try the Harmon's I, I opened it up and I tried it and I was like, I literally said out loud, oh my God. <laughs> I know, it's, it's like so crack. incredible. 
I don't know what it is. It's like a flavor that I've never had before in my entire life. So I'm craving it as we speak. Yeah, no, that is, I mean, and they're like six bucks, but it's like worth it. It's like a dessert. I know. It felt like a meal in my mouth. And the big one. Well, you finished it. I did. I finished it. It counts as a meal. That's also a bad habit of mine. I never finish like my drink. If that's weird. I always leave like a little bit like at the bottom. Even my coffee. I don't know why I do that. So. I have a legitimate reason for why I don't do that. Why? Are you ready for the story? Okay. <laughs> it's actually kind of fucked up. Oh god. So, my parents are used to be at war with each other's families. They divorced when I was really young. But my father used to tell me, don't don't eat food that your mother's family set out for you if you didn't see how it's prepared, if it didn't come out of the community. You're gonna be poisoned. Don't drink drinks on the bottom because that's where the medicine sinks. So now I get a physical reaction. I cannot drink the bottom of drinks because I get nauseous. Whoa. Like I get physically nauseous. But I know there's nothing wrong with it. But I've literally, like, it's my, just a that's what I'm <laughs> My father has literally told me my mom's family was trying to like poison me and kill me and he would be like, oh, they're trying to get you sick to get back at me. Oh my god. Like at him. I was like, bro, what the fuck? I was like, I was five. <laughs> I was five. <laughs> I'm like, sir. That's crazy. That's good. But the thing is, okay, so I went back to Taiwan once mm. since I came to the States in like the last 12 years. Mm. So it, this was when I was like, 14, 15, mm -hmm. we used to like, after we close up like at 11 or so, we go under the bridge. Um, <laughs> there's this like little cart yeah. that sells like street food. Oh. And you get like <laughs> a beer. That's so good. So I would go out with the, like the, the older guys yeah. and we'll all just like be shooting the shit. All these uncles. Like, all these uncles. The and then they're just like, let's drink. <laughs> so I'll just get literally a glass that's this big beer. Wow. We'll drink and then um, on weekends or like weekdays when it's slower, mm. we'll take our motorcycles, we'll ride down to the docks, Ooh. we'll shine these like giant floodlights down by the pier, mm. and these giant squid will <gasps> float up, and you spear them. Yo! And then we would grill it on the docks. That's so cool. It was the best squid I've ever had. Yo, you sound more Filipino than me. That's like what my dad used to do with the country. <laughs> I still feel, I don't feel like an adult though. <laughs> like same. I'm already in my midlife crisis. <laughs> I'm already going through crisis every day, baby. Oh, I feel that. <laughs> and instead of dealing with it, we just <laughs> whoop, whoop under the rug. <laughs> Not even for us. We're eating, getting tattooed, and uh, okay. Some of the most controversial around. things that I like to morbidly make fun of <laughs> is I'm like. Yeah, you know why we get tattoos? Is because it's. it's I just so, want to feel something. It's a socially acceptable cutting. <laughs> oh my god. It's socially acceptable. I just want to feel something. Yeah. I'm not trying to dismiss anybody else's like self harm. Oh it's god. not a good thing. But I joke about it. Not for me. As a yeah. way to cope. For me, it's like I just need to feel something. <laughs> I just need to have control over something. And you know, I was looking through my Instagram and I saw like the post that I put up about like the first tattoo you did to me. And I, was I did like, to you. Did to me. Did on me. Oh my god, I'm drunk. Um, <laughs> but like, I, I was looking at it and I was just like, that's so funny, you know? It's so nostalgic. I know. Even even though, though we need to rework that tattoo, like bro, I was even, an apprentice. Like, even like the style of the editing of the photo, like it really just got me thinking, like, oh my god, <laughs> how far we've come. <laughs> Not me. That was my third tattoo ever. Yeah, and yeah. that was like how my editing style changed a lot too. Completely, your style of tattooing, the editing style. I feel like really found my style. Like, yeah. Like how I shade. But I like how, that's like, so funny how even earlier, like you're like using me as an example. <laughs> as a healed uh, version, a healed uh, reference. I was like, you want to see kind of a bad tattoo? Let me show you her back. But it's kind of funny because you, it's like, it really shows like the progression of like your work. Like you literally see from when you first started in the middle and then to like recent. It's literally a timeline. Like I'm a walking timeline of your work, which is I think it's fucking hilarious. I love that. I love that. I think it's so funny. And it's like very different styles too. Like yeah, a lot like of different things. How I draw things. then is yeah. so much like so different than what I do and, now. And even like, depending on the pieces. Like I, I mean, I only have I think one colored piece ish. 
from you? The the flower. The flower. Yeah. Um, but we're about to do. Oh wait, the flower and the, this one. the spider lily. Yeah, I have the like the little heart, the rose. I want to touch that up though. It, it did kind of blow up, but I mean like. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for calling me out. No, but it's still cute. <laughs> like I have a lot of people who really see it, and they're like, "Oh, that the color is so cute. The way it looks is cute." And I'm like, "Well, here's my friend." But I really do love um, the. I do like have a lot of love for the haku, and I do love that like thigh piece he did. Mm -hmm. Like that one. That gets thigh a piece lot of, healed. Perfectly. I was like, oh, and it's like one of the biggest tattoos I have. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I remember, I remember emailing Ian and just be like, yeah, eight to ten inches. We're like, oh. I was like, I'm shit. Down. Okay. Listen, I got my other thigh. Weapons. I mean, you know. What? Ooh, what if we do a weapon floor arrangement? Listen. Like, have a vase, right, of some sort, <gasps> with weapons like sticking in from it. Bro. And then do like a. Uh, what's the fucking word in Japanese? For ikibana. It? Ikibana. Like, do ikibana flowers around it. So now you're telling me I have two tattoos lined up with you, is what you're <laughs> telling me. I'm a butterfly, taking my time. I'm a skeleton. 